Okay. Um, let's see. So once training two is equal to 100, I'm going to say greater than or equal to 100. I'm going to say when that happens, training two equals zero. Oh, wait, here we go. Um, training equals zero. But right here, we're going to say we're going to call a new function. New unit, and I'm going to just say z. I'm going to pass it the building. So new function. So we're going to say <clears throat> um, we're going to loop through all of the current men. And as soon as we run into one that's ne that no longer exists, we're going to use that index number. That way, let's say we have 10 men and five of them die. There's no point creating man number 11 if there's five dead spots, we could use the dead spots. So I'm going to say 4w equals 1 to men. Next w. If um, unit type equals 0, then go to 1. So we will jump right here to 1 if it works. Otherwise, we're going to say, so if we get to right here where I'm typing, then it did not find um, any men that were gone. So all the way from 1 to whatever our number is that are all still alive and still exist. So we're going to have to create a new new one. We're going to increase the bounds. So men equals men plus 1, w equals men. So this way once we hit 1, the index w is the one that we can use. So we'll say, oh actually, let me jump up here and I'm just going to highlight all these variables so that we make sure we've set each one of them. Now, um, a lot of uh, games like StarCraft, Total Annihilation, Warcraft 2, I don't know if Warcraft 2 has it. No, I guess it doesn't. Um, with Warcraft 2, if when your unit's created, it just appears in a certain spot outside of the building, usually like the top left corner, unless it's occupied, in which case it moves around. Well, your other games like StarCraft or Total Annihilation, you actually can set a waypoint in the building so it's a destination. Once the guy appears, that's where he travels. So what you would do is this point right here, A and B, is going to be some point relative to the building. But your destination, right now, we're going to say equals A and equals B. In other words, don't move, just stay where you are. You can see how you could replace this section with the current waypoint of the current building. So once they appear, they travel to some location that you've already specified. So we're going to appear B A Z, that's the current building's A minus B width Z minus, I'm just going to take an extra 6 off so that we are not actually touching the building. Um, B B minus B height Z. Oh, and you know what? This is supposed to be these width and height. I keep forgetting to do this, but they're supposed to be divided by 2 each. So he should appear, when a new unit is created, it should appear right around here, if I've done that right. Unit type equals, remember we were storing that in training for the building. The building is Z, the new unit is W. Don't get those mixed up. I'm just going to say 1, these values for speed, oh wait a minute. What is this, What was the speed we started them off at? Eight. One of them was eight. One of them was five. Let's make the new guy like fourteen, just so we can clearly see a, a difference in speed. Normally, you already know how that would have changed or been different. M selected equals no. He's not selected, and his health is equal to 100. All these things that are hard coded would probably be variables in your own game. So that's the new unit, and um, I think that's it. Let's let's try it. So, I select the building, I train, my money has dropped from 1,000 to 900, and we see the percentage bar. Once it's done, and 100%, we have a new unit, which can be selected and moved around. And if I highlight them all, he is the, clearly the faster of the three. They all have their own speed, but he is the fastest. And I can continue to train new units. 
if I select the building, the percentage bar goes up. Actually, what I should do is when the, no, the building is not selected and it disables this, it should hide that. And we, our new building is done. So actually, I'm going to do that real quick. Um, the, make this invisible. Label 2. And under timer here, um, was it a timer? Oh no, it was when you select something. So under picture 1, mouse up. I'm going to say label 2. Dot visible is false unless you've just highlighted one. There, that'll look a little bit more professional. See, so there's not, nothing showing unless you're training. Now, instead of just a, a label box, you know, you could use graphics, some kind of percentage bar that goes off. I should probably change where, you, where they appear, make it a little bit farther over. So instead of minus six, maybe like minus eight. But you get the idea. You can now train units. Um, I believe we have every. Oh, we don't have constructing buildings. That's right. What should we do here for constructing buildings? I don't really have any other kind of layout done. So if we have a guy selected, you just make a different building or a different button for buildings. Just say build. I don't know. Oh, I gotta have a price on it, don't I? I'm just gonna hard code some stuff in. Six hundred. So our buildings, we need to know if they're currently being constructed. So I'll make another variable. Constructed. Um, and you know what? Because this is the last video I'm doing, I've only got three minutes because I'm pretty much done with everything I wanted to do. Um, I'm kind of walk you through some of this without maybe doing all the steps. The same way... Um, okay, wait. You're going to want to say if it's constructed, 100 equals done. So when this training button shows up, you only want you want it to show up if the building exists, but you also only want it to show up if constructed equals 100. All right. If constructed is less than 100, it means it's still being built. In the same way that the training two value, the percent done, continue to increase, we want constructed to continue to increase if it does not equal 100 yet. So if it says like 40, you want it to jump to 41, and then 42 and 43. Um, that way the building doesn't work yet. You can't train anything until it's hit 100% done. Now, um, when we draw our building, draw a building, um, what we can do to be fancy is instead of the value 200 in here, I'm going to change this one here and say constructed Z times 2. That way when constructed is a low number the uh, blue value in this color is very low and it basically this gets all the way up to 100 times 2 is 200 so in the end they look like the purple that we started with. This is just a way of um, I'm going to start our building off by saying constructed 1 equals 1 and then timer where are we at here for buildings? Okay. Under this section, so the building exists, we can say if constructed z is less than 100 then constructed z equals z plus 1. That should work. So the building is blue and it's slowly turning to purple. You would instead of having the color change, you know, you could represent that with a bar underneath, something to show that it was being constructed. Now if I start it over, if I highlight it, it does still let me train. So that's where you would put code in to restrict it so that this button doesn't show up if the building's not finished being constructed. Um, I've only got 40 seconds, so I guess I'm going to end here by just saying you should hopefully be able to pull ideas from the other tutorials that would let you turn this into a real game. Um, if you have any specific questions, please leave it in the comments, and I would really uh, appreciate seeing some of the different stuff you guys do with this. I think it would be kind of cool to see you know, uh, your guys' take on some of these concepts, because Everybody always has their own weird creative way of um, taking ideas and turning it into something cool. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's given you a few more tips that you didn't have before that will hopefully help you make your own games. 
This is Apron and uh, signing out.